right here on AF and Casey the Eagle, where we're serving America's best. It's time for the latest edition of What's the Word, the radio broadcast that brings you news of our Area 1 community. I'm Army Staff Sergeant Crystal Crawford, and now here's the host of What's the Word, Mr. Frank Fisher of the USAG Red Cloud and Area 1 Public Affairs Office. Thank you, Sergeant Crawford. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of What's the Word. Just two weeks ago here on What's the Word, our subject was how to use the military postal system. Our guest that day was the Camp Casey Postmaster, Mr. Matthew J. Lewis. The things that he covered last time were so clear and useful for members of our Area 1 community that we're pleased to have him back with us today for still more tips and useful insights on using the postal system. By the way, Mr. Lewis served 23 years in the Air Force. He was in the postal field, so he knows the military postal system inside out. Today, he'll have fresh up an a fresh update for us on a problem that some Area 1 residents have been having with a an electronic glitch that we told you about. The glitch is in the USPS online tracking system. Maybe you know that it's telling some Area 1 customers incorrectly that the package they're waiting for will not be coming because it was not addressed properly and got sent back to the sender. But Mr. Lewis won't only update us on that glitch. He'll also give us some useful insights into the USPS tracking system itself. To us overseas, to the soldiers, airmen, civilians, family members here in warrior country, the system, the tracking system, is a way of keeping tabs on the progress of our packages. Uh, so it'll be good to hear what he has to say. In other topics, he'll give us a heads up on what things cannot be sent through the mail. Also, there will be good practical advice on how to pack a box properly. And he'll tell us some important things to keep in mind about using standard mail. These are all things that can save you time, money, and worry when you're sending or waiting for a parcel. Mr. Lewis, first update us, please, on the glitch in the USPS tracking system. Uh, the glitch uh, happened a while back where people were seeing uh, that the parcel had been returned to sender uh, for insufficient address. Uh, we've received notification from the Military Postal Service Agency that they plan on posting a patch during their regular maintenance this weekend. Uh, we'll see how that plays out in the, next, in the coming weeks uh, to see if that fixes the glitch. Well, that's uh, an, an encouraging uh, piece of news. And uh, let's talk about those items that are not allowed through the mail. Tell us what those are. Um, there is a, the, the list would be definitely really long, you know, pages and pages. Sure. There's no all-encompassing list. But some of the stuff that's common uh, we get questions on and we see in, in the mail stream would be uh, perishable items or non-mailable. Uh, maybe you see a fruit or vegetable uh, off post that's kind of new or kind of uh, strange and you want to send it home to your family. It can't be done through the, the uh, military postal system. Uh, anything that's flammable, flammable liquids, um, uh, any alcoholic beverages are non-mailable, and uh, external lithium batteries are non-mailable as well. And uh, tell those who may be unfamiliar with this, what do we mean when we say an external lithium battery? Uh, any uh, lithium battery that's not installed in the device that it's intended to operate. So normally, uh, if you have a cell phone uh, you want to send to a family member back home, as long as the battery is in the cell phone, the proper battery that was intended to operate it, it's fine. You just cannot include an external, an, ex an extra battery with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So if uh, something is going through the mail, let's say some sort of electronic device, it runs on a lithium battery, I can send it, or somebody can send it to me, and, uh, well, I'll talk about myself as the sender. I'm going to send it. It has a lithium battery in the battery compartment of the device where it belongs. If I send it that way, I'm good. It's okay. If, however, I've got a couple of extra lithium batteries in the package that are not installed in the device, that's a no-go, no-can-do. Is that correct? That is correct, yes. Right. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, just in a nutshell, we've got about 30 seconds. What's the main reason or the basic reason why these items are banned from the mail? It's mostly safety reasons. Uh, once lithium battery ignites, it's, it's very, very difficult to put it out. It's more difficult than any other type of battery to put out. And in the case of, uh, <laughs> I like this example you had, uh, fruit and vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be not so good about trying to mail those? Uh, it's mostly a biological hazard if it becomes uh, uh, rotten, if it gets delayed or whatever, it becomes rotten. And also there's our U.S. Customs uh, import uh, requirements that are not fulfilled when it goes through the mail system. Thank you. We'll have uh, more with Mr. Lewis after the break.
And here's Nelly with Die a Happy Man on the FNK of the Eagle, serving America's best. We're back with What's the Word, Hour, and here's Frank Fisher. Thanks, Sergeant Crawford. Hello again. Uh, today on What's the Word, we're talking with the Camp Casey Postmaster, Matthew J. Lewis. And um, in the previous segment, he told us some of the uh, categories of things that we cannot, mainly for safety reasons, uh, send through the military postal system. And one thing we want to add to that list is pressurized cans. You know, a can of shaving cream, for example, is considered a pressurized can. And by the way, if you want to know more about what can and cannot be sent through the system, you can visit the U.S. Postal Service website, and you'll find a good deal more information right there about those things. Well, Mr. Lewis, before you give us tips on the right way to pack a box for shipment, let's focus on something that may seem very obvious, it seem, seem very basic, but it's really worth a reminder all the same for our listeners, and that is proper container size. What should we know about the size of container we choose? Uh, the, the bigger the container you can, you can get for an item, especially the, the more fragile it is, if you're sending something glassware, ceram ceramic, porcelain, something like that, it's best to get a bigger box with a good amount of space between the item and the, uh, the mailing container itself. Uh, and that's to leave room for packing. Um, I say there's never too much packing, but obviously an inch or two is best at minimum to put it between the item and the side of the container itself. That's, that just protects the contents, right? Exactly, yeah, because, I mean, it, inevitably it could fall off a shelf or, or something, and it's going to make contact with the ground, and you want to make sure that what's inside has that cushion in between itself and the, the container wall. Any other uh, suggestions on uh, packing? Uh, a, a parcel for shipment? Um, in a pinch, uh, newspaper and stuff can do. It's always best if you can find bubble wrap to make sure uh, it stays in place and it doesn't get too compressed. Once the paper starts getting compressed, then you start losing some of that uh, cushioning effect uh, that you get from uh, the bubble wrap and other types of packing. And uh, what are some other things that we should uh, keep in mind about uh, sending packages? You know, we have a parcel. You've, you've just mm -hmm. suggested that we a little more room than less is better because if it falls or mm -hmm. takes a hit, the, the contents sure. is less likely to be damaged. What other things would you advise us about? Well, choosing the right container is a good thing. Uh, we have, uh, we, there are foot lockers and stuff that can be used to send stuff and they work okay. Um, duffel bags I would definitely not recommend. It's too hard to secure an address to a duffel bag and we can also cannot insure those for that reason. Um, also, keep in mind, if you're reusing a container, like I suggested reusing a box, um, keep in mind what that box was designed to be used for. Um, I've seen a couple different occasions where somebody will grab a big toilet paper box, an empty one from the commissary, and try to put 70 pounds of stuff inside of it. That didn't always work out well because the box is only designed to hold toilet paper rolls on the way to the store. So it's always best to keep in mind, you know, pick a good thick wall to cardboard box um, when you're, when you're mailing things. Um, some of the other things is uh, have your addresses ready, um, the, the from and to address. The from goes in the top left, which is the sender's address, top left. And the, the to address goes uh, middle, bottom, uh, in the center of the uh, label. And to uh, make sure you have your from address uh, formatted properly, you have to have your full name, your first name and your last name as it appears on your ID. We're required to check your names on your ID to make sure the person mailing the item is the pe person whose address is on it for security reasons. Um, also have your unit number, so now you have to know your unit number. And if, you have, if you've been issued a box number, which you should have, uh, have your box number on there too. And of course, if you're mailing from uh, the Casey Post Office 96224 and the other post offices uh, 96 to 258 and 257 um, in Area 1, and never use, never have your people sending you mail. They should never use South Korea. Um, the item will go into the international mail system, and it's possible it, you may never see it. Um, uh, I hate to say that, but uh, so it's it's important to tell people to make sure they never put South Korea on the to address when they're sending you stuff. If they have to put a country, just use United States. Our post office on post here is considered United States. And that's uh, worth uh, taking an extra moment to uh, talk about because uh, the, the postal system understands, the people who work for the postal system, the people who handle our mail, they know that if an address says APOAP 96258 or whatever it is, mm -hmm. they know to treat that as 
United States. It's it's practically saying the same thing in, in, in their language. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Um, all the, the mail handlers at the sorting facilities, they know exactly where to send it, even though uh, it says APO, AP 96224, whatever, they know exactly how to route that mail to get it over here. Um, but if you put the word South Korea on there, then it prompts them to put it into the international system in which it, it should arrive in the Yongsan uh, Korean Post Office and hopefully it gets handed over to the U.S. Uh, post office there and forwarded to the right place in Korea, but it doesn't always happen. Thank so you. it's always better to avoid that. Sure. We'll return after the break. And I'll be right back with your weather exchange rate and gas prices. Right here on AF and Casey the Eagle, we're back with What's the Word Hour, and here's Frank Fisher. Thank you, Sergeant Crawford. We're back with the Camp Casey Postmaster, Matthew J. Lewis. Time now to look at the U.S. Postal Service tracking system, something that's really important to so many of us who are here overseas and want to see what's going on with our packages. Mr. Lewis, uh, what things should we know about using the system? Um, well, for one thing, um, not every single stop that the package makes, is, it's not actually scanned all the time. Um, it only scanned when it's uh, at the major sorting facilities, it'll be scanned. Um, and then once it hits one of these major, the big sorting facilities that sorts the military mail, uh, it may drop off the radar until it shows back up again in Korea. Um, and that may take some time depending on what's in the package and the screening procedures and stuff and flight availability and stuff like that. Um, so, but by uh, the time when it leaves the States to the time it gets to Korea, there may be some lag time. You have to be a little bit patient with it. You know, what you said uh, matches my experience. I order things from the United States and uh, I use the tracking system, and I've often found that uh, I'll, I will see, let's say, a book that's ordered. I'll see that it left. I'm making these locations up, but maybe, you know, someplace in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. It'll say, uh, item has left the uh, uh, sorting facility or the carrier facility, whatever they say, mm -hmm. uh, in, in Lexington, Kentucky. And I'll see a day or two later, I'll see... Uh, has arrived in uh, at a at a sorting facility in uh, uh, oh, Dallas, Texas, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then I'll see has arrived in Chicago, mm -hmm. and what I'll then see typically is uh, after a day or so it'll say uh, or it'll say has arrived at a sorting facility carrier facility in Chicago and is now on route to the destination. Mm -hmm. And once, this is at least my experience, right. once I see in the tracking system that that package has arrived at Chicago and, and it says is, is on its way to the destination, mm -hmm. that's the last time I see any reference, any locations showing up in the tracking system until it has finally arrived, been checked in by our military postal system in Korea, and... Uh, you know, is, is, I guess, waiting for me in the unit mail room, and it'll say, has arrived at or been delivered to APO, AP, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah, the, um, our main sorting facility is in Chicago, so uh, once the mail arrives there from whatever post office it's sent from, or it could be a local sorting hub in whatever state, uh, it makes its way to Chicago, and from there it's, uh, it's sorted and screened, um, and once it goes through that whole process, then it gets uh, usually containerized from a military aircraft container and then uh, put on a, a, a military mail container, I'm sorry, and then uh, onto the aircraft, usually one of the, the big civilian aircrafts that carry passengers, and then uh, comes over to Korea and to Incheon. Um, so, yeah, after it leaves that Chicago point, you won't see it again until it arrives. Normally, it'll be scanned in Incheon. And um, sometimes it may not be, it may only uh, be scanned if it's an uh, outside piece. Um, it may not account for the pieces inside the bags. And then it arrives here at uh, Camp Casey, Korea, as scanned in. And there's something that I sometimes wonder about, and I imagine that a lot of other of our military community members have wondered about this. When it arrives, let's say, at Incheon, it comes by mail, arrives mm -hmm. at Incheon, what, what happens, what is done, <laughs> and by whom to make sure that that mail destined for military recipients mm -hmm. gets separated and, and given to the military system rather than getting lost in the distribution throughout Korea civilian on the civilian side. 
Hey, yes, we have an um, Air Force person out there that monitors the flight line. Um, but normally when the mail comes in, it's already marked anyway, who it's supposed to be given to. Uh, but also the Air Force personnel are, are out there checking to make sure that there's no stray pieces out there, uh, no mail just sitting on the flight line, that it all gets to the JMMT, uh, the, the facility that sorts the mail and puts it in the trailers and then uh, truck to the APOs. So in the case of arrival of mail at Incheon Airport here in Korea, it sounds like it's our airmen, U.S. airmen, mm -hmm. who have that initial very important contact with it to make sure that it does get sent in the right direction, so to speak. That's correct, yes. They maintain the relationships with all the ground handlers and uh, keep an eye out for any, any, any mail uh, destined for a APOs in Korea there uh, make sure it gets to the proper place, the, the building that sorts the mail. Thank you. We'll be back after the break. DJ Crystal Clear here with you on this Thursday, April 7th. It's 346, and we're back with What's the Word? Hour, and here's Frank Fisher. Thank you, Sergeant Crawford. Uh, we are just joining, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Mr. Matthew J. Lewis, the Camp Casey Postmaster. And uh, he told us about the importance of Chicago as a hub for mail. Um, I want to ask him now about <laughs> Richmond, California. You'll want to certainly hear what he has to say about that. Mr. Lewis, what's the importance about Richmond, California, if you look in the tracking system and see that your package went there? Um, in, a, in a couple words, be patient. Um, <laughs> yeah, Richmond, California is where all the surface mail is sorted. So you have different classes of mail of sending it from the U.S. to overseas. Uh, and priority is one of the options, and then surface is usually the cheaper of the options. Um, if you see that your mail has been routed to Richmond, uh, California, then you can expect a, quite a bit more weight because that mail is traveling by boat. Um, it is sorted at the Richmond facility, loaded into a shipping container, those metal shipping containers, I call them Connex containers, and then it's put on a boat and then it uh, makes its way uh, uh, all the way to Korea. So um, it can take some time. It can take up from the date of mailing to arriving in Korea. Surface mail can take up to four to six weeks. And when we say surface mail, that is as opposed to mail going by air? That is correct. Uh, we have uh, also mail uh, coming by air. It's usually priority mail and all, all of the letters first class and stuff like that. That all comes by air. We'll be talking in a moment <clears throat> about standard mail, but uh, while we're, we're to stay for a moment on the subject of Richmond, California, uh, let's say you want to order something and you absolutely you want to get it as soon as possible you don't want to wait four to six weeks or more is there anything that a, a customer can do when they're ordering um, definitely inform the sender whether it's grandma or whether it's uh, any one of the other lesser known companies out there um, some companies already know this and they automatically ship priority mail no problem but some other companies um, if there's a notes section in the internet ordering uh, uh, form where you're filling out all the stuff is there the other section um, just make a note say please send priority mail um, so let everyone let all the, all your relatives and friends know send it priority mail unless you don't need it that fast um, some people can wait for their stuff and that's fine and it's a little bit cheaper that way so if you really do not want to have it go by ship you want to get it as soon as possible even though you spend a little more money for priority mail, it's a wise thing to, when you're thinking of ordering something, mm -hmm. to let the company know that. If you're talking to a customer service representative over the phone or mm -hmm. uh, doing it online, to make it clear to them, as you just said, please send, send by priority mail. That is correct. Yeah, priority mail is the uh, uh, most common solution for that. Usually takes around seven days or so, depending on how far. Um, from the west coast the sender uh, is sending it so if they're in California or Washington, Oregon, somewhere on the west coast it's going to be a lot quicker than somebody sending it from New York or Connecticut or somewhere else um, but yeah definitely send it a uh, priority mail and if you absolutely have to have it really fast express mail is the way to go it's going to be quite more expensive though and we have a little more than a minute left uh, w what do you want to tell us about standard mail um, like I said, standard mail is the, is the cheapest way to go. It's, it's definitely cost effective. Um, and also, it can be used to send some things that cannot go by air. So, I mean, there's like some, uh, like some car parts or whatever may not be able to go certain, uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, uh, classes of uh, chemicals or whatever can't go by air. But you can have that sent through surface mail to uh, uh, Korea with, with usually no problem. Um, 
And it's especially more cost effective too if it's a heavier item, things up to 70 pounds and stuff. Um, it can be a lot cheaper for you. Is that the main advantage of going standard mail, that it's the least expensive? Least expensive, and the fact that the mail doesn't go on to an aircraft opens up the door for a few more things to be sent over that normally wouldn't be allowed on the aircraft. And you mentioned a 70 pound limit. What is that? Um, all mail is limited to 70 pounds, but obviously the, the quicker the delivery uh, class of mail, whether it's express priority, it's going to cost you more. Um, but if, if it's a 70-pound package and you send it by surface, it's probably going to be a little bit cheaper. Well, my thanks to you. Good to have you on the broadcast again. We've been talking today with Mr. Matthew J. Lewis, postmaster at the Camp Casey Post Office in Dongduchon. He's with the U.S. Army Garrison Red Cloud and Area 1's Directorate of Human Resources. What's the Word airs every other Thursday at 3 p.m. here on AFN KCD Eagle. I'm Frank Fisher of the Area 1 Public Affairs Office, handing back now to my What's the Word broadcast partner, AFN DJ, Army Staff Sergeant Crystal Crawford. Until next time, thank you for joining us. Here's Sergeant Crawford. And as Mr. Fisher said, thanks for joining us for this edition of What's the Word, and I'll be right back with your weather exchange rate and gas prices.